Welcome back. Who wants to know why it's so important to return a healthy touch to our culture? Like how could it improve our children's lives, their brains and their ability to connect? Who wants to understand how misguided attempts at safety actually prevent us from being safe as a culture? And who wants to know why sometimes people touching us on the shoulder or touching us on the hand can actually be a projection on our end about the intention of touch and that what their intention is might not be the way that they experience. Are you excited for this? We're going to talk about all this and more. Chapter one of the touch crisis after the show reel. <laughs> you can't be able to watch. So let's get real here. I want to start out by reading an actual quote from the National Association for the Education of Young Children. And they say, programs should not institute no-touch policies to reduce the risk of abuse. No-touch policies are misguided efforts that fail to recognize the importance of touch to children's healthy development. Touch is especially important for infants and for toddlers. Warm, responsive touches convey regard and concern for children of any age. Adults should be sensitive to ensuring that their touches, such as pats on the back or hugs or ruffling the child's hair, are welcomed by the children and are appropriate to their individual characteristics and culture experience. Careful, open communication between programs and families about the value of touch in children's development can help achieve consensus as to acceptable ways for adults to show their respect and support for children in the program. Did you hear that? Respect and support. So healthy touch begins by communicating and getting needs met at a young age. So for example, I've got two nephews. And when they were young, I would always ask, would you like a hug? My mom, on the other hand, was like, mm -mm, I'm the grandma. When I want a hug, you give me a hug. Now, both of these things can teach different things to our children. And I'm not saying either one is wrong, but just hear me out as to what and why this is so important to your own family and your own well-being. When we ask children of any age if they would like a hug and we give them the opportunity, not only are we teaching them that we respect them and their life and their boundaries, but we're also teaching them how to respect another person's no if they say no. So in other words, if I'm asking my young nephew, would you like a hug? And he says no. And I respect that. Not only am I respecting his no, but I'm teaching him that no means no. And so if a woman down the road says no, he also respects her no. Brings a whole different twist to it, doesn't it? And touch is so important for children of all ages. There was a study done that showed that when kids roughhouse, it improves a chemical in the brain called D BDNF, excuse me, BDNF, that improves memory. It improves their learning capabilities and they have more positive feelings about themselves. Isn't that great? So here we are being able to hug or allow our kids to roughhouse with each other. And what it does is it actually improves their brain. It improves their feelings about themselves. It helps them feel connected. Don't we want more of that for our children? Of course we do. I've mentioned in other videos about how healthy touch really increases oxytocin, which is the cuddling hormone, which increases trust in social interactions. It increases social bonding, altruism. It changes our blood pressure. It increases our immune system. So isn't it interesting? that in times of severe stress in our culture, we tend to pull away from touch when really that's the time that we need it the most in order to feel like community is around, in order to boost our immune systems, in order to create cultural connection. 
One study even in team sports found, and listen to this, it's a critical neuropeptide involved in shaping important team processes in sports, such as trust, generosity, altruism, cohesion, cooperation, and social motivation. There have been studies done that correlate the number of touches that people have on basketball teams to how good they are as a team, even after removing the skills of some of their key players. What's also important to understand is whatever we learned in our community, our cultures, our experiences, is how we project other people's touch onto us. So in other words, I might want to hug you because I care, and you might perceive that as me jumping in your space or not giving you respect. And if we're opposite sex, you may, because of background or training, perceive it as something sexual or vice versa. So this is why it's so important to really understand where do our beliefs and systems and values come from to make sure that A, and I'll talk about this in other, in other videos, that we know how to say yes to a person and no to touch if that's what we desire. B, where we know where our boundaries are and have some playful ways to say no to touch. Maybe we're empathic and we don't want, and it's too much when other people touch us. And so we also want to understand what might be our own perception of touch versus what people's intentions are. So that way there's a lot, there's less miscommunication and more ability to bond, even if no touch, no handshakes, no hugs, no anything like that is involved. So how do we know when it's time to increase healthy touch? Well, in my book, The Touch Crisis, in chapter one, I go over exactly that. Start asking questions about what have you learned or experienced around touch in your family, in your community, in your culture. How does it relate to your safety and well being? What kind of support or healing work might you need in order to give or receive touch that feels good to you and to those around you? And if you were to know, what are some of the trails that led you to watch this video? Why are you here? And if you can make one change in your touch habits, in your beliefs or interactions, what would that be? So tell me below, what would you like to see change in your life? Remember that you are loved, you are loving, and you are lovable. Have a beautiful exploration. Namaste.